What's up guys, this is the Honest Outlaw here, and we're gonna be doing a little different video today. Uh, I posted this gun on Instagram, along with a challenge that I was involved in at Brownells, and a lot of people wanted me to do a video of it, and instead of doing it on Instagram with my phone, I figured we'd do a little high quality version here and throw it on YouTube. Uh, before we do that, I want to thank Brownells. Brownells actually had me come out to their compound and we went through a cool little uh, rifle building kind of... It was supposed to be a challenge, but it ended up being more of a class for both me and uh, my buddy Nick Pewview on Instagram. Both of us went up there originally set to compete with each other and then in like a, a rifle build off. but. Uh, there was a really cool guy there named Randy who knows a lot about building rifles and then another guy named Roy who I'm good buddies with and then a few gunsmiths as well that really showed us how to nail down building a rifle and what we managed to do was take uh, a bin of parts at the range, build the gun, and then shoot it within, what, like a couple hours or something like that. It would have been a lot less time as well, but uh, one of us lost a screw and then that, that turned into a debacle where we had to drive back. But in about an hour or so of building, we put this together and then we had a competition where uh, we go from not zeroed at all to trying to hit a target uh, five inches wide at 500 yards. And I did mine in two and a half minutes and Nick did his in a minute 50, which is screaming fast. Oh, it hit on the black steel at three o'clock. Perfect left and right, you were way over the top. You were way over the top. Left and right was perfect. Left and right was perfect. I think you're gonna win, Nick. Doubt it. Are these like good there? Hit on the steel at four o'clock. Black steel, four o'clock. Just adjust a little left and like four inches high, dude. Okay. Impact! Thank you. Mm. Dude, and you center punch that thing too. Nice. So it was it was an unorthodox uh, day where I learned an awful lot and what came out of it was this gun right here. So, to be clear, this is the most accurate rifle I have probably ever shot. Uh, we were shooting, uh, just to put paper, uh, just to put it on paper to start out with, we were shooting at 100 yards. All of my bullet holes touched every single time. We shot 50 rounds through this carbon fiber wrap barrel here. We had no heat stringing that we're aware of or anything like that, it was an extremely hot day. Uh, like today, it was in the 90s, was it like 95 or something like that? Yeah. Extremely hot, and uh, the gun handled it really well. Now, a One five? Yep. Got a spot for you, same uh, middle target, correct? Yep, the on same it. one we were shooting at for the... So two and a half. Yep. Is wind left or right? It's kind of swirling. Okay. It goes right to left and straight, and then right to left and straight. Impact! That'll do. That was... Uh, two and a half down, and I was a hair to the right. That was five o'clock, an inch inside the white. Okay. But that's an impact. Smack a baby. So let's get into it here. We'll go from the brake on down to the stock here. Now the brake is a MDT uh, brake, and what it does is it has a little adapter in there uh, that fits on to the front of the muzzle, and then you can screw this off if you like. It's timed on there, so I'm not going to screw it off. But you can screw it off rel relatively easily, and then you can put a suppressor on it on the same mount, which I think is pretty cool. This is a Howa. Uh, 6.5 Creedmoor uh, carbon fiber wrapped uh, barrel here, or barreled action I should say, it's a Howa 1500. The action on it is extremely smooth, easy to use, uh, it's easy to disassemble, one button just like a, a Remington 870 and you can slip it right out just like that, and you can put it back in as well. Uh, your safety is right here, and it has a, uh, it's an adjustable Timney trigger which we adjusted down to one pound. 
sure. Are there any instructions in the tip? Uh, yeah, yeah, there are. Uh, hopefully, there's even like a they hide pit. them in this there's thing. Pretty picture in there. <laughs> they don't have bad instructions. Yeah, for sure. Uh, the best trigger I've ever had on a bolt gun, absolutely. What a surprise, it's Timney. Uh, Timney makes some of my favorite triggers out there right now. If, you've, if you get into their uh, bolt gun triggers or the AR triggers or even their, their new Glock trigger is pretty insane. We'll have a review on that here shortly. Uh, but I, in my opinion, other than the action, the star of the show is this MDT chassis system here. Now, I don't seem old, but I've been into guns for a long time. And back in my day, you had to have a stock that had to be bedded with fiberglass, and it took a real gunsmith or a person with a lot of expertise and craftsmanship to be able to pull off, whereas this absolutely does not. All you do is you take the action out. Uh, I replaced the trigger, which is relatively easy. We adjusted the trigger with a couple Allen keys, and we dropped it into this MDT chassis system here, uh, which has an arc rail, which we'll get into here in a second. And it's literally just two torque screws, torque them down, good to go, on target, 500 yards. Extremely impressive. I mean, it's still easier than I expected. It's just like learning how to build an AR for the first time. Once you got it, I feel like yeah, we're gonna kind of have. I mean, but yeah, the fact that other than that random issue, like right. you don't really have to have a gunsmith. You don't need. Right. right. Okay. So drop in like so. Just need to make sure there's clearance. Try the trigger and everything, yeah, make absolutely. sure everything works, safety works, bolt release works. Back here, we've got a stock with enough adjustments to really blow your mind. Uh, if you want to focus on this here, it comes with a uh, folder too if you want. I opted out of the folder just because I, I like the rigidity and I know that it's probably going to be rock solid when it's locked out, but I have really no use for a, a folding system on my gun uh, for what I'm going to use it for. So I decided to go with the straight stock, which is pretty sweet. And then it's got a comb adjustment here, cheek adjustment, and then it's got a length of pull adjustment as well as the uh, butt pad. Uh, can slide up or down depending on your particular shooting position. I have it up right now uh, level with the cheek piece because I was shooting uh, from a bench. So that can all be adjusted on the fly whether you're shooting on a bench or whether you're shooting prone or whether you're shooting some sort of other awkward position uh, which is really nice. Uh, depending on people usually adjust uh, length of pull here uh, with some cheaper options using those spacers. However, you can't adjust that on the fly like you can with this. You just unlock this and spin this dial and it comes in and out super fast. And it does come with all metal uh, dials and everything like that and everything is really high quality. Now, this chassis system here is relatively light for what it is and it does incorporate an arc rail. And I don't know if you guys have seen one of those before, but essentially what that allows you to do is you can untighten your bipod here and you can slide it out if you have enough room to stabilize or if you don't have a lot of room to shoot let's say you're on a bench or something like that you can slide it all the way in super easy and it's not that much weight you know I was really surprised I was aiming at the uh, dead center one there dead center one, that's what I'm looking not good okay let me, let me zoom in here that's fun make it real tight and let me examine this target real and uh, equip that with the uh, Atlas bipod here, which has more adjustments than you know what to do with. It can go back, it can go forward, it can go side to side. Uh, there's a joke in there somewhere. And then obviously it has the notches similar to the Harris's that I'm so used to using. And it can come with the uh, claw feet uh, to stick in the ground if you are using it on a lot of grass. So other than that, we have the Night Force, uh, I think 20 MOA mount, something like that. And then we have MDT rings, which are extremely high quality. And then on top of that, we're sitting a uh, five by 25 uh, Brownell scope, which I didn't even know they had a scope until we went out there for the sh uh, shoot. And again, extremely impressive scope. Coming in around $1,000, I think. Uh, we're gonna be doing a separate review on this. It's got zero stop. It's got a Horus style reticle, which I used almost the entire time. I'm a real reticle guy. I don't like to spin dials. But uh, the five by 25 
can give you all the real diversity you need for a hunting or long range situation. Anything between 100 and literally a mile, five to 25 is gonna be good. Now this rifle caliber here will get you out to like two thirds of a mile. Uh, I've heard of people shooting 6.5 Creedmoor at a mile. I personally have not done that. The first I've shot it is a thousand yards, although I've seen plenty of people have no issues well past that 12, 1400 yards. So. 6.5 is a really good caliber to get into as far as the long range game because there's just so much ammunition available for the gun. Uh, you can dial in your ammunition without ever having to reload, although if you want to get that super precise shot, obviously reloading is the way to go. However, we were shooting uh, half MOA groups of 500 yards with factory uh, Hornady ammunition uh, right out of this gun, which was extremely impressive. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Low, three inches. Just low. Window! It's not overly heavy. Uh, it's relatively compact with that 22 inch barrel. And uh, if you want it to be more compact, you could just put the folding system on. All the adjustments you'd ever need. And with this big old uh, brake on there, there's zero recoil whatsoever. A lot of people wonder why you'd want less recoil. The reason for that is because you want to see the trace and the bullet impacts in your scope. So when you fire, uh, the gun doesn't come off target at all. You can see what you need to adjust and then adjust from there. Uh, we got the scope shade on it and uh, the gun, the, I forgot to mention the optic is uh, illuminated if you so choose. I ran it non-illuminated for the day because we were out there in the bright sun. And uh, the dials are, I think, quarter, uh, quarter, uh, Nope, they're one MRAD, so that shows how much I know. Uh, overall, the scope itself was a lot higher quality than I expected, uh, just because I, Brownells is not exactly known, I mean, they're known for selling scopes, but they're not exactly known for making scopes. Uh, my relationship with Brownells is a little bit tighter than any other company that I do reviews on. I actually know people who work there and I have done events for them, so be aware of that. And they did give me this rifle uh, for doing the competition. And uh, overall, I'm gonna be doing a ton of reviews that involve this gun and this optic. I wouldn't be as excited about it if it wasn't real, but holy crap. I mean, I, part of this is because I've never had my hands on what you would consider an extremely high dollar precision rifle before. Uh, the best precision rifle that I'm aware of that I've owned have been Bergara's, which are really good, and we'll be having a review of that here shortly as well. Uh, however, it doesn't even remotely compare to the accuracy, low recoil, and just simply the ergonomic capability of this. The key to precision shooting, at least to my knowledge, is to basically be comfortable and be secure in your shooting position. That way you eliminate some variables. And in order to do that perfectly, all these adjustments are, let, let's just say it makes the process a lot easier. Uh, being able to move the bipod back and forth seemed like a dumb thing to me until we started shooting in awkward positions and I realized how, how nice that was. Uh, the ability to cant it if possible. Also, the ability to completely adjust this stock, especially being a big guy like myself, uh, just really, really helped me out. One of the things you gotta do when you get behind the scope is you gotta get comfortable, close your eyes, see if your point of aim is on target, and then you can adjust your comb height so every time you get on the gun, it's right where you need it to be. Uh, the rings are solid, the mount is solid, so we had no issues with zero or anything like that. And we shot, like I said, I think we shot 50 rounds of 6.5 Creedmoor, and then uh, Nick's buddy shot a couple more after that. So, so far we got about 70 rounds through this and uh, no issues whatsoever. Uh, this is not a review by any means. This is just a video of me explaining what the rifle is for those of you guys who saw it on Instagram. And, uh, oh, and I did want to mention that we are running a 10 round mag out of that, which is pretty sweet. And uh, the reason why the uh, MDT uh, vertical foregrip there is uh, tan is just because that's what we had available and we threw it on there real fast. And I weirdly kind of liked it, so I never replaced it. Um, overall though, if you get one of these, uh, if we get one of these chassis, it does come with the grip and all that good stuff. But we did buy all this, as I said, in parts. This rifle is not available for purchase, but you can buy this on uh, Brownells' website and then you can put it all together yourself. Trust me, if I can do it, you can do it. If you want to see more of this rifle, all you got to do is let me know in the comment section. Let me know what you want us to do. Uh, plans on this are taking it out to a thousand yards, uh, which should be a chip shot for this. 500 was relatively easy when we got it sighted in. So 
we're gonna be doing that. Let me know if you wanna see anything else. Let me see if you uh, maybe want this compared to my uh, Brigar B14 or maybe some cheap rifles I have like the Ruger Precision or the Savage Axis. Hopefully I'm not missing anything. It's kind of an impromptu video. Please like and subscribe. Please support your Oklahoma shelters and remember to recycle. I'll check you later. I'm kind of disappointed it's not a race because it would have been a really funny race. Neither of us have any idea what we're doing. <laughs> 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 we're with the screws. Oh, there'll be a race. Don't worry, we'll get to a race. <laughs>